as the French call it, but we just say Le Mans. The French priest and the American soldier. This event, this classic of sports car racing, attracts people from all walks of life and from all over the world. It's a tremendous carnival atmosphere, although this one doesn't look too happy. The back side of the Dunlop Bridge, which you seldom see, it's a uh, eight-lane footpath over the course. People, people everywhere. Always in France, too, red. Red coats, red sweaters, red skirts. Red bandanas. Cracker eating contest, just part of the, the circus-like gaiety that goes on at this event. It's a tremendous show. Yeah, French cowboys. Oh, yes, and here's one. Oh, voila, monsieur. And the pit area. Pre-race. A lot of milling about. People crowd over the pit wall have been for hours there holding their seats. And these people, they're standing right by the rail where the accident was to happen later on and take many of their lives. But they had their positions and they wouldn't move for anything. The Gordini. Oscar. Anguilini, very beautiful little car. And at this race, we had a zoom lens. Maserati, and we zoom in again. Zanardi, the odd double pontoon arrangement. Ferrari. This was Castellotti's Ferrari, car number four. Maglioli's Ferrari, little insignia, Parrot, of course, the Triumph TR2, Fraser Nash, Bristol, Cooper Climax, center steering sports car, Connaught, the MG, the course on the MG was Southern California and England's own Ken Miles, Kiev. Salmson, Aston Martin, Porsche, and Cunningham with the Meyer Drake engine. And the crowd around the Mercedes pits, you couldn't even get near them. Tremendous crowd. Mercedes mechanics watching the advertising bombs that Esso sends up in the air with the oil cans floating down from under them. British crew milling about, face plates being polished. Rosemary Southworth takes a few pictures. Photographers are getting ready. Another SO balloon. La Petite Vitel, a big bar behind the pit area. Driver gets last minute congratulations. Aston Martin crew, Rich Parnell, Peter Collins, Mike Hawthorne, and the Jaguar crew, Ivor Bweb, the short one, and watch the hand Neubauer and Fangio get here. It's a British pit giving a hand to a world champion driver and a world champion team manager, Alfred Neubauer. Porsche team gets a few words of encouragement. Gray haired gentleman, I believe, is Arcus Duntoff. And the course marshal driving, of all things, a Bentley Continental starts his circuit around the long course. Out on the turn, one of the turns, again of the Molson Strait. Beautiful car, the Bentley Continental. Very elegant. Boy Scouts pick up every scrap of paper that's around the pit area to avoid it flying up into the grill of a car or up possibly up into a driver's face. Count Maggi and Charles Ferru. Now the drivers are lined up. Just about it. Very, very tense moment right in here. Drivers checking their own watches. 
And there they go. Ferraris are first up in the line here, the low number of cars. And there goes a, another cameraman's hair in our lens. Two D-Jags, Phil Walters and Johnny Class are well away. Aston Martin goes up very fast on the inside. The cars are all getting away very nicely, with the exception of Mercedes. They got away rather slowly. And much excitement down at the pits again as uh, everybody clears away from in front of the pits. They're not supposed to be sitting there with their feet over the rails or anything like that, but they usually are. On the first lap at the end of the Molson Strait, Castellotti and the Ferrari had a tremendous lead. Very, very nice lead. Second place was Hawthorne in the Jag. Followed by Maglioli, followed by the other Jag. Phil Walters in the Cunningham Jag. Johnny Class in the Belgian Jag. The Aston Martin and the Mercedes team had come up very, very fast. There's Kling with that flap open. Up the long straightaway, still Castellotti. He built up a tremendous lead in the first couple of laps. The photographer winds up his national European photographer using American equipment. And down to the Dunlop Bridge. When the smaller cars come through, the Porsches ran as if they were tied together in this particular event. All the way through, from start to finish. Briggs Cunningham and the Meyer Drake part Cunningham caught up at 22. And Mercedes with their flaps up and their flaps down, manually actuated by the driver. Hydraulically actuated, I should say, but mechanically controlled. Some of the 1100s and 1500 cars coming out of the Nardi. 750 car, car number 61. The two Porsches, 37. Von Frankenberg. One of the, probably one of the best Porsche drivers in the world. And the gendarme checks his program. A big event, everybody's intrigued by it. Briggs Cunningham again in the Meyer Drake Cunningham car. Burned a piston, unfortunately, after running a very, very good race. Had a lot of trouble with it. Lost a gear and lost a piston. Mercedes Pitts sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting. Mercedes was running in second spot at that particular time. Car number 20 is LaVey. Be co-driven by John Fitch. Fangio in 19. Passes Phil Walters in the Cunningham J. A LaVey again, car number 20. And some of the privileged few that uh, exist at every French event that's open to the public. There's not much crowd control, not much safety. And no one does much about it at Le Mans. Everybody just seems to stand around wherever they feel like. Maurice Rosenthal with his famous cartridge belt, the dean of French racing photographers. And a few more of the privileged few sitting on what uh, would be an escape road right along the edge of the course. Well, the working press, well, well you look, here we are. The MGs, car number 64. race goes on. Wasn't too much excitement here at first. A tremendous racing, but uh, positions didn't change too rapidly. Castellotti again. He's dropped way back now. He dropped back to the third spot at the end of the second hour. Hawthorne was in second and Fangio was first. Some more of the Bristols with their fine tail fin. And the Nardi spun out, a very unstable car, although, well, there we are, yellow flag, nobody pays much attention to it, turns right out in front of it. Very beautifully designed little car with uh, fair, only fair workmanship. It's a little surprising because it was quite radical. You'd think they'd turn out something a little bit better. Of course, while he spun out, the one of the photographers is down there changing film, and they pick a few parts off the circuit. Flagmen are kept pretty busy here at Le Mans. And the three MGs running together, one of the Triumphs, and the Renaults, and Porsche number 49. That's the 1100 Porsche, 1100 Spider. Kling in the Mercedes, and Fangio behind him, uh, pardon me, and LeVay behind him. Car number 21, and one of the DBs goes up into the sand. Hawthorne goes on around. The Lotus, car number 48. Driven by Chapman and Flockhart, two well-known British drivers. 
Till Walters again in the Cunningham Jag and Fangio again with his flaps coming down. Most interesting impression these flaps made. As a matter of fact, uh, considerably shook up the people at tech inspection. They made them cut another rear window in it so the drivers behind could see through. Levee again. This is all down in the Molzon area. And Fangio goes very, very wide, almost misses a turn. Levee put his brake up way, way back for the turn, first turn of the Dunlop Bridge, way back compared to uh, Fangio, for example. See, there's Fangio. Check those relative positions, and you'll see that Fangio put his up at the last minute, carried it through the turn, then as he, when he began to accelerate, he put his flap down again. These things did reduce the uh, top speed considerably when they would pop up. Briggs Cunningham again, one of the sole American entries, although Phil Hill was co-driving. One of the Ferraris, Maurice Trintignant, Ferrari number five, and we'll with Harry Shell, another American. Bowman and Davis in the Jaguar, car number eight. Von Frankenberg again in the Porsche. Finished way, way up. And uh, there we are. That was the end of the Nardi. I only ran for just a few laps, only ran probably for about uh, two and a half hours, and that was the end of it. It's a very fast and very tricky little turn right in through here. And here the race began to shape up again. Fangio was right behind Hawthorne. Now these were on the same lap, although they were running first and second place. And uh, the cars can get pretty confused. There's Hawthorne pulling out the turn, checks it, looks over his shoulder, and Fangio's over on the other side of him. Down through the White House turn. A flock of Porsches roaring through there. And back up on the straightaway, the endless procession of cars. It's getting a little darker now. Sun has gone down, Mercedes still going around, flaps going up and down. And 6.28 p.m. Macklin walks away from it. Hawthorne misses his step. The race went on. Eighty-seven people lost their lives in this tragic accident. Over a hundred were injured. Why did it happen? Been a million opinions volunteered. We won't volunteer ours. It happened. It was a tragedy. And all we can do is take every precaution that it will never happen again. Race goes on. Harry Shell turns out in car number five, Ferrari.
the faces of spectators returning from the accident area reflect the tragedy and the horror they saw. Race goes back on, full bore, back to the water from the fire extinguishing units. Up the other side of the Dunlop Bridge. Lights are coming on now. Getting very dark. Out on the turns, the carnival spirit still prevailed. But back in the pits, they've more or less settled down to, we might say, half-hearted, but serious racing. Scoreboard carries the positions and the numbers of all the cars. Quite a job, quite a task for those people to keep that going all night long. In the pits, cars are being scored. Every lap is taken into account. Not only on the big scoreboard, but the individual pits keep their uh, own scoreboards, naturally. They bring the cars in for fuel, so on and so forth. Porsche pit, the big white P, very well illuminated. There had been a lot of rumors about this time that uh, Mercedes might uh, drop out of the race, but uh, we all discounted it. Finally, Mercedes pulls in. Stuttgart had been contacted. They authorized the withdrawal of the cars, and the news went out all over Europe. Mercedes leading the race had withdrawn in respect to their fallen team member. Gray, dreary, and extremely rainy dawn broke at Le Mans. And this is what happens in France, memories of World War I and World War II, mud. There was very little happiness, very little cheer left to the spectators at this time. They were more or less standing around because they'd paid their admission. Very funny thing, it even uh, it even caught us. The the whole spirit of the race, as I said before, was gone. Some of the very, very fast competition had withdrawn, of course. Mercedes was giving Jaguar a battle and left the smaller car, such as that DB. Very fine little car, but just not the spectacle that we have in the larger cars we're running. Die hired a British group there supporting Jaguar. Very bedraggled group of spectators. It should have been bedraggled too. It poured and poured and poured all through the early morning hours. Valenciano and the big Maserati doing a beautiful job. Finally retired after running up in second place with a clutch failure. Paul Frere and the Aston Martin. Second down the malls on straight, give you some idea of the speed. The Oscar. Porsche. The television cameras covered up. Mike Hawthorne. Car number six. Out in a very nice, comfortable lead. Ken Miles. Recognize him from a mile away. Car number 41, still going around very, very smoothly and quietly. Those are the nearest things to production cars in the entire event. Television monitor there. You can see the cars coming on down from some other section of the circuit. It's actually the way to see a race, I think. Car number six, leading Jag, pulls into the pits. Ivor Webb was driving at this point. The red jacket. Not too much enthusiasm from the spectators. Mainly trying to keep dry. Webb in the red jacket is out of the car and Mike Hawthorne is about to take over for the finishing laps. The Jaguars were very, very potent at Le Mans. Very fast. And an interestingly turned out car. Gendarmes prepared for the finish of the race to keep the crowd off the circuit in their customary manner. The burned area here in the foreground is exactly where the accident took place. In the background, a plane leaves with a load of passengers. And although a good many people had lost their lives there a few hours before, the spectators were crowded back there again. Oscar, MG, 
And Mike Hawthorne in the winning Jaguar. Second place, Aston Martin, Paul Frere, and Peter Collins. And the three Bristols. The Porsches again. Wonderful job by the Porsche Le Mans. Photographers run from their various points in the circuit to get, get pictures of the finish. Bob Coogan from Los Angeles in the glasses and raincoat. I think every new syndicate in the world and every little publication, one sheet paper in Europe covers Le Mans. We think that Charles Furrow with the checkered flag best typifies the spirit of the 1955 Le Mans, unfortunately. Spectator response was slow. The Belgian crew got a big hand for third place with their D-Jag privately owned. Hawthorne and Webb posing for their pictures. Of course, first place car, number six Jaguar. Being congratulated, being presented with large bouquets, as is the European custom, by several race officials. And the French gendarmes handled the photographers in their customary courteous manner. This is part of the charm of covering a French race. This was an interesting one. He wasn't doing anything, but he had to come down. Jean de Bien, Belgian driver, co-driver with uh, Seidel in the Porsche. Congratulates Polensky, co-driver with von Frankenberg. Von Frankenberg in the glasses, finished fourth overall in the Porsche. The Porsches finished fourth, fifth, and sixth. Johnny Klaas on the left, in the center Jacques Suarez of the Belgian team, third place winners. Paul Frere, another Belgian driver, co-driver of the second place car, Aston Martin with Peter Collins. And still more autographs, more signatures. Heroes for today. In spite of the rain, the crowd remained around to watch the post-race festivities. Bristols with their tails sticking up in the air, and a final inspection of the parts carried by the cars during the race.